All right. All right, let's turn them in now because I don't want you sitting there doing them during class and not paying attention. It's more important that you pay attention than try and do them right now. So who has them? This is the, these are the problems that were – you were supposed to have them for last class. The evens, yeah, 16 through 36. Two classes ago. It's a long time ago. Oh, I have officially decided to postpone the exam by one class period. So the exam was supposed to take place a week from today. Next Thursday, it's actually going to be the following Tuesday, which I think is the 15th of April. Anyone else? You have it? All right. Hmm? Uh, what do you all think? Should I allow anyone to turn in next time? <laughs> well, I mean, talk to me after class. This is the thing. I mean, I, I don't try, I'm not trying to be rude to people or mean to people. I mean, I believe you did it, but I mean, just it's a fairness thing, right? I mean, if it's due, it's due. If I say you, someone else can turn in later and someone doesn't have it right now, then they can go do it, right? So it's kind of like the covenant, you know, it's, it's the rule. Well, I have rules if you're not going to follow them. But so anyway, talk to me afterward, all right? We can find ways that you can prove that you've, that you've done it, okay? All right, no questions over homework. We are going to do a quiz at the end of class. All right, if we think about the things that we've done, where's my folder? Are you serious? I have a handout for you. Did I not? I didn't even take, I thought I left it in my backpack. I forgot my homework today, too, I guess. Should I'll just have to write down the steps. I have the hand. I printed it. I had it. I must have taken it out and put it on my desk before I got here. All right, so up to this point, though, the things we know how to factor are things with four terms, three terms, and two terms, right? So let's try and go back and just go through what the steps are going to be for us for factoring. And this is factoring anything. What are the steps? So we're doing a general factoring strategy. First thing that we always do, GCF, okay? We always look for a greatest common factor. We always pull that out first. We don't want to forget that step. After we do that step, we look to see, do you have two terms? Or no, I'm going to go in the steps at four terms. And this is a question you are asking yourself, okay? After you have factored, your GCF, do you have four terms left inside? If you do, what do you do? Bless you. What do you do if you have four terms? What's the technique for factoring for four terms? Grouping, right? Good, good. Okay, if you have three terms, what do you do? That's what we did last class, right? That little X thing. And I, I showed you two different ways of doing it, right? Method one and method two, right? There were two different approaches. Both of those methods are referred to as AC methods. Okay, so I'm going to put here AC method. And you get to choose which one you want to use. Now, the reason they call it AC method is because, re if you recall, the way I introduced that, I had written this down. We said, how do we factor three terms that looks like that, right? And the first step we did was we took the number in front and multiplied it times the number in back, right? Well, we multiplied the what times the what? 
the A times the C, which is why they call it the AC method. All right? But, yeah. So that's what we do when we have three terms. What if we have two terms? Two terms, two terms. Well, that's when we had those formulas. Difference of squares, sum of squares, difference of cubes, sum of cubes. Remember all those formulas? So you ask yourself, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Or is it this? Difference of squares, sum of squares, difference of cubes, sum of cubes. You recall all those? Now we have formulas for these, don't we? Which I will write them down as we need them. I don't want to write them all again. But I will point out, do you remember what happened when we have sum of squares? Is prime. Okay. So the top one has formula, the bottom two have formulas, but the second one there doesn't. Okay, after you've gone through and determined if it had four terms, three terms, two terms, what you do is inspect your answer. Inspect answer. for further factoring. So we might actually have to go through and factor some more stuff. And then step six would be to check your answer. And to, the way to check it, do you all remember how you check something? If you factor something, do you remember how you can check to see if it's right? Multiply it all out, right? So I'm just going to put FOIL or multiply. Um, but you can only FOIL if you have binomial, binomial. So that's why I'm not going to say FOIL. I'm just going to say multiply it out. All right. Do I go too fast? You all got that? All right, so here we go. Here's our first example for today. Everything I do today is very similar to what you'll see on a test, right? So if you want to know, like, hey, what are the test problems going to look like, this is it. And we'll have a review. Don't worry. We'll talk about the test later. But we are starting to get to the types of things that you'll see. All right, so let's start with something like this. Um, I want you to factor 4x squared y squared plus 12x squared y minus 72x squared. First step, GCF. So let's go back and look at numbers. I have a 4, a 12, and a negative 72. So what is a common factor of those, the largest one we can find? As far as numbers, a 4, right? So as far as GCF, I should have a 4. Now let's look at the x's. I have x squared, x squared, x squared. So what can I factor out then? x squared, right? Since they all have two x's, I can actually pull two x's out. How about y's? I have a y squared, I have a y, and I don't have a y there, so I cannot pull a y out. They don't all have a, a y. So that is it, right? What do I write next? Parentheses. How much space should I leave in that parentheses? Should I do that like that? No. How much do I need? Enough for how many terms? Three. And that's because my original problem had one, two, three terms. So I need enough space for three. All right, now I'm going to try and transform the 4x squared into the first term up here, 4x squared, y squared. What's the only thing missing? A y squared. So I put y squared there. By the way, I'm going to put my equal sign in front of this right here. Um, okay, so turning 4x squared into 12x squared, y squared, the only thing I'm missing is what, a 3 to make it a 12, so plus 3, and then what else? Right? Good. Now, 
I want to make my four turn into this negative. What's up? There's a bunch of stuff up here. This looks like student work, some paper clips. Yep. Okay, no problem. Okay, so we're trying to turn the this thing here into this. So what is it again? Negative. 18, that's it. Do I need more? No, nope. those will match up. So that's just the first step, GCF, right? So now what we do is we look in the parentheses. How many terms do we see? Does that look like all of it? No. Oh, that's not yours? Okay. Yeah, I don't see them there. Okay. It's, it's all right. They needed the break, the mental kind of... Okay, so we have three terms in the parentheses, right? So what do we do with three terms? AC method, right? So this is where we go back to what last class was about. And I will just highlight, these are the three terms. This is all I'm focusing on right now. I'm not even caring about the 4x squared anymore. So how do I apply the AC method to this one? And we had our two methods. And did you all say that you liked the method where we wound up doing grouping? Well, they're both kind of called AC. Well, they both use the X, right? <laughs> Let's go through. I'll show, I'll show both just in case it's been a whole 48 hours, all right? So let's, let's do this. I make my little X thing over here. What are the two numbers I'm going to multiply together to get this up here? It'll be that 1. The 1 is in front of the Y squared. Be careful. Don't be touching that 4 over there. That 4 is already happy. It's outside, right? I want to do 1 times negative 18, which gives me negative 18. I want to do the, the middle number, which is a 3. That goes here. And then I try and come up with two numbers that multiply to be 18, right? Or multiply to be negative 18, add up to be 3. So I look at all the factors of 18. 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. And I go until I find a place where I'm going to have the difference between the two numbers is 3. Or 3 and 6. And I need to make one of them positive and one of them negative. So which one? Negative 3, positive 6. Everyone agree? If you take negative 3, multiply it times 6, you get negative 18. You add the two together, you get positive 3. Yes? All right. Now, let's try it the way that I taught you first, the first method. You take your equal sign, let's just bring the GCF down, 4x squared. Then I write two sets of parentheses. I put the minus 3 here. I put what? 6, but I should put what in front of it? Plus. And then I put the variable in front of those, but I leave a space in front. Remember that? So the variable I'm going to use here is what? The variable is y, right? I'm not putting an x. That's all I'm trying to point out. x like that, right? That is not the end of this method. There's one more step. The step was to take the number in front, which for us is 1, right? And put it in front of either one of these, right? And then put that one underneath the other one's number. We did do this, right? Okay. So what's going to happen, though, is... Either way I do it, if I put a 1 in front of the y and then a 1 underneath the 6, does anything, oh, not a 6, a 1 underneath the 6, does anything change? No, 1 times y is still y, 6 divided by 1 is still 6. So really nothing happens, right? And our answer was just what we had. So I don't need those 1s, I'm not going to put them in there. But please keep in mind that you do have to do that part of the problem. And now at this point, I'm pretty close to being done. I just have to do one more thing. I have to check through the step five, inspect my answer, make sure there's nothing left. These two right here, y minus 3 and y plus 6, both have two terms, right? But they don't look like a difference of squares, bless you, a difference of cubes, sum of cubes, sum of squares. They don't look like that, right? Because nothing is squared. So I can't do anything to these. And then this, of course, is my GCF. That's one term. Once it's one term, you're happy. So it's, this is it. 
we're, we're box it up and move on. What do y'all think we end it for today? You can, but I mean, I wouldn't. If we end the day. Yeah. Right now. No, nah, that was my April Fool's. I'm sorry. I didn't get to do it. I didn't get to do it on Tuesday. So just trying to get it in there. It's too predictable on April 1st, isn't it? You know someone's going to mess with you. But see, y'all didn't want to leave. That's great. I could tell by the reactions. Like, no, man, we're enjoying this. This is fun. Did what? Well, I don't know. I'm not. I, I was good the first 20 minutes, and then I was like, oh man. Uh, I don't even. I you. I couldn't tell you. It was. It was federal because we were talking about. Um, they were talking about the different parties, Republican, Democrat. Independence. U.S. government. All right, let's move on. Um, how about those problems just don't seem difficult. Yeah, this one looks fun. 90. A cubed, B cubed, minus 10 A, B cubed. GCF, right? That's our first step, GCF. Okay, numbers. What number goes into 90 and 10? The biggest one you can think of, 10. Okay, so I have a 10. I can pull that out. Let's look at the A's. How many A's am I going to be able to pull out of here? One, because I have A cubed and A, so I just pull one A out. How about B's? All of them, right? B cubed. Well, that's just great. How much space should I leave here in my parentheses? Enough for two terms, right? All right, so now let's go ahead and figure out how I'm going to turn 10 into 90. Nine. And then I'll need how many A's? A of them. Uh, A of them. Two of them. A squared. And then I don't need any B's, right? I already have B cubed, so I'm, I'm happy with that. All right, how do I turn 10 into negative 10? I need a negative 1, don't I? Now, I don't have to put the 1 unless nothing else is going there. So d do I need to put an A? No. no. Do I need to put a B cubed? No, but I need something there, right? So I do, in this case, need that one to be there. You all see that? You have to have two terms. No headphones? Oh, there they are. Okay. All right. Um, are we done? No, we're not. Why aren't we done? What about this in here, 9a squared minus 1? How many terms are there? Two. What do you do when you have two terms? Well, you start looking at those formulas we had, right? Two terms. I, look, I've got an a squared here. Isn't 9 3 squared? Isn't 1 1 squared? So we have to be able to look at that, and I'll do this on the side. I need to look at my 9a squared minus 1. I need to be able to recognize that that's something squared minus something squared. So what do I have to square to get 9a squared? 3, 3, a, right? Square the 3, you get the 9. Square the a, you get the a squared. <coughs> what do I have to square to get 1? 1. With me? So the formula we have is this, a squared minus b squared equals a plus b in parentheses times a minus b. Remember that formula? Difference of squares? Now for us in this problem, what's the a, so to speak? It's actually 3a. See, it's kind of weird because we're using a, but 
But just to get it to match the formula, this is like the A in the formula, and then the B for us is like the 1, isn't it? <coughs> Questions? What am I going to write now next to this? Yep, two sets of parentheses. And then I'm going to put the A plus B. So for us, A is 3A. So I put 3A plus what? 1. And then I have the next one is A minus B, so 3A minus 1. Now I have to go back through and I have to look at these again. Can I factor these? These are two terms, right? Do, do any of them have squares or cubes in them? Nope. We are done. Box it up. Put the box on it and move on. Moving along, x to the 6th, y to the 4th, minus 27, x cubed, y to the 4th. GCF. What? do those have in common? We could actually get three x's, right? Because one of them has six, one of them has three, so I can go x, let's go all the way to cubed, and then y to the fourth. They both have y to the fourth, so I can go y to the fourth. Enough room in my parentheses for two terms. How do I recreate that first term, x to the sixth, y to the fourth? What do I need? x to the third. Okay, next term, yeah, I don't have the negative 27, so I, I need it, and then that's it, right? So I actually didn't need anything next to that. Is that all right? Are we done? No, because what's in the parentheses has two terms, and it's cubed minus... 27 or x cubed minus 27 27 is 3 cubed isn't it so this is again i have to recognize that x cubed minus 27 can be rewritten as something cubed minus something cubed so this is our difference of cubes formula that we're going to be using what goes in those parentheses i just put there x and then 3 so for us a is x and B is 3 in the formula. Now, you may or may not remember the formula, but I'm sure you have it written down somewhere in your notes. It said that if you had A cubed minus B cubed, which is what we have, that that's equal to A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared. Remember that formula? Not do you remember. Do you remember seeing it? Okay. On the test, I will give you that sheet. It'll have the set of steps. It'll have the formula, so you don't have to worry about that. And you'll also be allowed to have a little cheat sheet that has some, you know, whatever steps and formulas you want. The difference of cubes. The difference of cubes. So back to the problem. I'm going to write a set of parentheses with enough space for two terms. Next to it, another set of parentheses with enough space for three terms, right? Because that's what I have here, two terms, three terms. So let me first write A minus B in the first one. What's A? X minus, what's B? Three. Okay, so that's A minus B. Now I need to put in there A squared, which for us is X squared plus... Now, A times B. 
Isn't that x times 3, which is the same as 3 times x? So 3x. And last but not least, b squared. 9. 3 squared is 9. Are we done? Let's look at the first set of parentheses. Two terms, but neither one of them are squared or cubed, right? So I'm, I'm done with that. Here, did I just say three terms or two terms? I said two, right? Okay. How many terms here? Seriously, three terms? How do we factor three terms? That thing, right? Okay, but hold on, hold on. There's something very important that you need to take away from this. In this formula for difference of cubes, this will always be a trinomial, right? It'll always be three terms. So you'll, you might be thinking to yourself, well, wait, this sucks because every time I do this formula, I'm going to have to go do AC method on this, right? It turns out that it's guaranteed that this is prime. If you're using this formula, this quadratic, I'm sorry, quadratic, this three-term polynomial here is going to be prime. It will not factor. Now, let me just show you. You wouldn't have to do this, but let me just show you. If we did AC method on that right here, I would take a 1 here and multiply it in the back times 9, right? You get 9. And then what number goes in the bottom here? 3. And now you have to come up with two numbers that multiply to be 9 and add up to be 3. So write out the factors of 9 over here. 1 and 9, 3 and 3. That's it, right? 1 and 9, there's no way you can put those together to get 3. 3 and 3, you can get 6 or 0, right? You can't put those together to get 3. So basically, you can't come up with these numbers, which means you can't factor that, which means it's prime. So our answer is not prime, okay? We don't write prime right now. What, all we say is this can't factor, but this whole thing is our answer. So we just box that. So the moral of the story here is anytime, anytime you use the difference of cubes formula or the sum of cubes, because sum of cubes formula is very similar to this, that trinomial that's, that's going to be hanging off the end there does not need to even be looked at. You just, you just let it be. Questions? All right, you're going to have some time to do some problems today. Don't worry. Eighty minus five x to the fourth. That looks unassuming, right? It doesn't look too dangerous, too scary, because it's only two terms, so it's, it can't be that bad, right? Well, let's just go through the process. You can see this, is gonna, this one's going to drag on for a little bit. GCF, 5. So let's see. How many times does 5 go into 80? Sixteen times. Okay, what's next? Minus, now five I already have it, so just need the x to the fourth, right? Anybody see what I see? Sixteen minus x to the fourth, there's two terms, right? It's not a difference of squares exactly, but we did problems like this in class where it's not exactly different squares, but you can still use difference of squares formula. What you have to see is that the 16 here is 4 squared, isn't it? And x to the fourth is actually x squared squared again. So, I, I mean, these are things you just have to pick up over time. You, you recognize them. I'm going to take that to the side, and I'm going to start thinking to myself, That doesn't make sense. I'm going to start thinking to myself. Is there any other way to think other than to yourself?
right? I, I mean, I can't think for you, right? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting distracted up here. All right, what, what do I need here? What do I square to get 16? 4, and then what do I square to get x squared? Oh, man. So I'm identifying the two things, A and B. A is 4, right? B is x squared. The formula I'll be using is the formula that we call the what? Difference of squares, good. And it says A plus B in parentheses times A minus B. So back over here in my problem, put my 5, draw my two sets of parentheses that are going to represent the two binomials that I get from this formula. Uh, A plus B, 4 plus X squared, right? A minus B, 4 minus X squared. Yeah, you can still do more. I know you were sad inside saying, oh, the problem's over. Nope. You get a little more, a little more action here. Look at the first parentheses. Two terms, right? Ah, four is two squared. X squared is a squared. You're thinking, hey, there's a formula for that. Well, there kind of is. It's a sum, though, right? And what is the sum of squares? It's prime. That means that you cannot factor that piece. Does that mean I write prime and move on? No, that just means I can't do anything to that factor. So I leave it. But this one, I can't, because it is a difference of squares. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work down here. 4 minus x squared, I need to be able to write that as something squared minus something squared. So 4 is what squared? 2. And x squared is just x squared. So the a and the b are now to an x. Because this does not factor. It's, it's a sum of squares, and there is no formula for sum of squares. Are, that's right, because it's a difference. The formulas that we have, you ha look back in your notes. We have a formula for this. When it's a squared minus b squared, here it is. When it's a squared plus b squared, there is no formula. It can't be broken down. Help me out here. What am I going to write back here? How do I, what am I going to rewrite here? 5, then the 4 plus x squared, right? Good. And then 2 plus x in parentheses, right? And then 2 minus x. So basically, this part here, the, the highlighted, becomes those, right? That's what happened. And if you look back even further, the 16 minus x to the fourth became these. So it's like you applied the difference of squares once and got two factors, and one of those factors went again. And luckily for us, they're, they're gonna, we're going to stop here, right? Because neither of these have squares in them, so we're, we're done. So this is the one we can box. Next, 8AX. Plus 16BX minus 2AY minus 4BY. Any, anybody in here like government class? You like government? Good. No offense. You like math class? Good answer. What what do we do here? Okay, GCF. Is there a GCF? 
to, how about A's? No, not, I don't have A's everywhere, right? Interesting. <laughs> what is that? I mean, I know what it is, but what, is that a certain, okay. <laughs> is it? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I'm not a fan of it, but I think I know what you're talking about. Um, X, do we have X's in all of them? No. Do we have B's in all of them? Y's in all of them? No. So the only thing I have is a 2, right? That's the only thing. Now, remember, you have to take that GCF out. And then I need enough space for all four terms to come back, right? So I'm going to leave big parentheses there. What goes in there? 4x plus, careful, not 16, 8bx minus 1ay or just ay and then minus 2by. All right, so now we look inside the parentheses and we say 1, 2, 3, 4. Four terms. So we factor four terms by grouping. So grouping, you draw that line right after the second term. You focus all your attention on just the first two terms, and you try and pull a GCF out of just the first two. Is there a GCF in the first two? What is it? 4x. Now, let me see how I'm going to handle this 2 out here. The 2's out here, right? A big old set of parentheses there. I pulled out a 2x, which leaves me with what? Oh, wait, you said 4x, didn't you? Okay, good. Which leaves me with what? A, and then the other one, plus 2b. Do we agree on that? 4, 4x four comes out of here. That leaves you with a plus 2b, because if you distribute through, you get back those two. Now, when we did grouping, we said the way we liked it was we put that other parentheses over here, remember? And we rewrote what was in that first one, a plus 2b. And then we tried to figure out what we could force in front of this to make it happen. So how can you turn an A into a negative AY? Negative Y? Right, negative Y. So let me try a negative Y there. Does that create what I want? Well, negative Y times A gives me negative AY. What's negative Y times 2B? Negative 2BY. So it works, doesn't it? Okay, now in grouping, if this works, we're supposed to take that parentheses, right? We're supposed to write it down, and then next to it, in another set of parentheses, what do we write? 4x and then minus y, the two things that were out front. Then what about that 2? <clears throat> that 2 is just going to stay out there. So watch the way I write this. Here's my 2. Here's that thing that they had in common. And then in the other parentheses, 4x minus y. I do a quick inspection, two terms, nope, no difference of two squares or anything like that. Two terms, no squares, no cubes, I'm done. I think that we should do at least one more before I have you do your in-class quiz that you can work on together. Let's do 16x cubed minus 50x squared minus 21x. So I had a student ask me after, at the end of class last time, they said, hey, um, I haven't been to class the last two days, but I've been watching the videos and I've been doing my homework. I missed a couple of quizzes. Um, when can I make those up? And I said, you cannot make those up. So just FYI, I don't mind you missing 
you're allowed to miss four days and um, you have the videos that you can watch, but you're supposed to be here. So if you miss something, you miss something. That's just the way it goes, all right? Okay. Meanwhile, we have this. So what do we do first? GCF. What do we have as a GCF here? That's it? Just X? Is there a number that goes in all those? Uh, you have to think a little bit about it. It's not... What are the only numbers that go into 21? 7 and 3, right? Well, 3 doesn't go into 16 and 7 doesn't go into 16. So it's pretty much after that you, you can't... You don't have to look at anything else, right? So... You could play with that in your head or on a piece of paper, but you figure out there's no number that goes into all those. All you have is the X. Now, <clears throat> how do I get that back? 16X squared minus 50X minus 21. So I just took an X away from everything, right? All right, and now I look in that parentheses and I see... AC method because there's three terms, right? So my AC method, I'm going to grab that 16. I'm going to multiply it times negative 21. <gasps> we might need a calculator. Negative 336. Okay. And then the number down the bottom. Negative 50. Oh, wow. How are we going to come up with the numbers that multiply to be negative 336 and add up to be negative 50? Well, you know how you do it? You get a calculator out and you start playing with it. That's what you do. Okay, and I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with 1. I know 1 and 336, right, multiplies to be 336. How about 2? Well, just do 336 divided by 2 on your calculator, and what do you get? 168, right? Do you all agree with that? Mm. All right, okay. Uh, those, those the, we can't get those to become a 50, right? So now try three. Does three go in there? 112? Okay, does four go in there? 84. So right now, the closest I can get, let's see, I'm trying to get to 50. I can get... 80, can't I? I could do like 80 minus 4, or 84 minus 4, but that's still too far away. So how about 5? 5 go in there? No. 6? Six? 6 goes in there, 50. Oh, this might be it. Okay, it looks like there's a way to get a 50 out of here. I just got to get the signs to work out. I need a negative 50. So how about negative 56 and then positive 6? Does that work? That gives me, when I multiply those, I get a negative. When I add them, I get a negative 50. That should work. And we said last class, does it matter if you put the, the 6 here and the negative 56 here? Doesn't matter, right? Left or right, doesn't? Okay. Uh, let me do this one. I think I'm going to do this one both ways. I forgot to do it both ways last time. I'm going to try and do it both ways. Just remind me if I forget. All right, so I'm going to do my two sets of parentheses. I'm going to put what numbers on the right sides of these parentheses here? Negative 56 and positive 6, so plus 6. What variable do I put in front of those? X. And then I need to work with what now? Sixteen. Okay. Don't forget, in this method that I showed you last time, you always have to go back to that number, the A, right, and go back and do something with it. I'm either going to put it underneath the 56 or underneath the 6. Well, 16 doesn't go into 6, right? So that won't reduce. Does 16 go into 56? It doesn't. So either way, I'm going to wind up with a fraction. So you get to pick, and it doesn't matter. I'm going to put the 16 here and then the 16 in front over here.
this gives me x parentheses x minus let's try and reduce this fraction all the way what number goes into both 56 and 16 8 does right well but what if you didn't see that first what you could do is you could divide both by 2 right 2 goes into both goes in the first one how many times goes into 56 28 times goes in 16 8 times but 2 goes into each of those what 14 times and then 4 times but 2 goes into those 7 and 2 right which is the same thing you would have got if you would have realized that 8 goes into both of these either way that should turn into a 7 over 2 And then the other one, 16x plus 6. Now, we are technically not done because when I inspect this right now, this does not factor because it's not different squares or anything. What about this one? What? what? How does that factor? It has a GCF right this has a GCF what number can come out of 16 and 6 a 2 and I'm going to take that 2 I'm going to pull that 2 all the way out in front of the X be left with X minus 7 over 2 and then over here I took a 2 out so I have 8x plus 3 right in last class we said we could leave our answer like that you could also do what with this 2 if you, don't, if you want to get rid of that fraction, if you don't want it there, what can you do with that 2? Put it through, back through into here, into this one. Not to this one, to, to the first one. Let me do that just so you can see it. If we multiply that 2 back through, leave the x outside, you get 2x, and then what? What happens when I, that's 2 times x, and then 2 times this, you get minus 7. And then you have 8x plus 3. box it up or not well I mean not not that it doesn't matter it's the 16 has to go in front of one of the X's right everyone and then so let's say I put the 16 in front of this one then the, then I also have to put 16 underneath this 6 or the other way around, I could put the 16 in front of this X and put the 16 underneath this 56. You would still get the same exact answer either way. Now I'm going to do it the other way. Okay? The other way, the other way of doing this entire problem is to start out here again. Um, what do you, which one are you talking about? I didn't erase anything. Are you saying here, that's an 8, this is a 3. Is it the angle or what? <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. All right, so uh, there it is. Now I'm going to do the other approach. Now, the other approach that we used for this, we pull the X out, right? That's still the same, GCF. What else was the same? That, that X thing over here, we still have to come up with those numbers. It was negative 336 and negative 50. You still have to make that table and figure out what everything is, and we got that it was negative 56 and 6, right? So everything like that was the same, but here's where it changed. What we did is we looked at the two outer terms, right? And we just bring those down and write them, don't we? And we leave space between them, and then we use these numbers. So I'm going to do it, but do you all remember what, how this goes a little bit? Okay, now I'm, I still need to deal with that X on the outside. So here's X, here's that parentheses. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger since I'm going to be putting more inside of it. I put my 16X squared. I put my minus 21 here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the negative 50X in the middle as two different things. And what do I use? 
these two numbers, right? I use negative 56, so I write negative 56 what? X, and then plus, because 6 was positive, 6X. And we said last class the reason why we do that is because these, when you put them together, is actually negative 50X. But we've created how many terms now? Four, and so you can do it by grouping. So you split it right down there. What can I pull as a GCF out of the first two? An 8. Here's my X. Don't forget that out there. I pull an 8 out. What else? An X. What's left? 2X. And then minus 7, right? So when you pull out... a an 8x out of this, it leaves you with a 2x. When you pull an 8x out of this, you're left with a negative 7. All right, now we need that to, to match, right? This is grouping, so I put my parentheses here. I'm going to put a big parenthesis on the end of this also because that closes off this parenthesis in the front. What goes in this parenthesis? 2x minus 7. What goes out front? Yeah, we have to think about it, but all we're trying to do is t turn our 2x into positive 6x. So I need a positive 3 out there. And we are one step away from being done. X, what time did class start? 12.30? Do we only really only have 15 minutes left? Yeah. 2X minus 7, and then in parentheses, what? 8X plus 3. Does that match the answer we had before? Yes. So let's take the vote again, now that I've done one of these. How many of you are leaning towards this as being your primary way of doing it? Okay, that's fine. Whichever way you like. But I said last class, remember that you want to know how to do both, but have a favorite. If you go back to the problem we did in the very beginning, uh, where was the one? No, that wasn't it. No, that wasn't it. That one right there. Look at this one. Remember how we did this and we had that one there and the one went here and underneath and we were done? If you had done this by grouping, then you would have had to have rewritten that. The y squared would have come down. The, the negative 18 would have come down. Then you would have rewritten the middle as what? M minus 3y and then plus 6y. Then you would have done your grouping down the middle. You would have done GCF out of here and, and done all that, right? But the people who had the other method, they're, done, they're already working on the next problem. You know what I'm saying? So you should have both in the bag of tricks. The one you're more comfortable with. The one you're more comfortable with. I, the only way that you get to the point that I'm pointing this out, the only way you get here is after a lot of problems, you know, and then you start to kind of look at it and say, hey, look, anytime I have a one out here, I know that this method will work real clean. But sometimes it works clean even if it's not a one. So always go with what you're most comfortable with. So what I'll do is I will give you your homework assignment, and I will – ask you to work out two problems before you leave today. Your homework is going to come from page 434. It's going to be 11, 15, 15 through 33, odd. And 
and then 37 through 49 odd. It's a lot of problems. Now, this assignment is to be turned in on Tuesday. That's this upcoming Tuesday. At the beginning of class, for two quiz grades. It must be turned in complete, all right? What I mean by that is if you come in here and you say, hey, I've only done, you know, I only got to do the first, uh, you know, up to like 33. I didn't get to finish the last. I won't accept it. It has to be complete. Now, these are all odd problems. All the answers are in the back of the book. Do not turn in a piece of paper with all the answers and no work, okay? I want to see your work. Are we clear? All right, so what I'd like for you to do is right now, just open your book and just start working on these problems. I want you, you, you can't leave until you at least get two of these problems done. So try 11, then try 15. 